What's popping game today? I'm going to show you how to get some of the best settings for the U87 and the Mi 1073 along with some other universal audio plugins. If you want more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell so you'll be notified about more videos like this. If you guys need mixing and mastering or templates to help you create high quality music in a short amount of time, link in the description. Shout out to Z Sounds, they have great affordable plans to get you expensive gear. They also sent me this microphone, so appreciate you guys. Maybe you guys have the U87 or the Neve 1073 and maybe even a tube tech compressor nearby, which is a legendary setup. I'm just gonna show you some of my settings on how to get some of the best recording vocals that you can get. You might wanna check out some of these settings and see if they work for you. Maybe you guys have some other options or different stuff that you guys use. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my other camera and show you my settings on the Neve 1073. Okay guys, so I have my Neve 1073 right here. And first thing, of course, turn your power on, turn your phantom power on and all that, you know what I'm saying? And then boom, so next thing you wanna do, you gotta decide from this moment on if you wanna choose to use the EQ or not. And I could just go ahead and show you, let me turn it off. I'm not using the EQ right now, so as you can see, I'm getting a whole different sound right now. As you can see, let me go ahead and turn it on. Let me know if you think it sounds better. Right now, I have the high band pass turned on only because, you know, in the mixing process, majority of the times, you don't really need those frequencies under, you know, 50 and 60 and stuff like that. You're basically just fighting with the beat. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you're recording hip hop vocals or trap vocals, um, majority of the time, you got an 808 in there. You know what I'm saying? And you don't really want to fight with those those frequencies. You want to keep a clean vocal. Basically, what I'm doing is cleaning my vocal up, taking those frequencies below 50 hertz, and getting a better vocal. And it's really up to you guys on what you really want to do. You don't got to always follow all these steps and stuff like that. Try it out yourself and see your results. Uh, most of the time, I don't even do that. You know, I sometimes I just record with the EQ off and just keep it like this. Do all my mixing and editing in Pro Tools. But, um, you know, I kind of like how this EQ sounds on this microphone, just playing with this stuff, man. I really like how that sounds. It sounds a lot cleaner when I throw the high band pass on there. The next thing I would do is, as you can see, I have a, you know, this knob right here basically changes the frequency and on, on which frequency I want to affect. Right now I have it at 60, you know, just to kind of give it just a little bit of body. I don't have it turned up too much. I basically have it to the first dot, as you can see. It's not really high too much, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to, you know, recreate this vocal. I just want to get a cleaner vocal, you know what I'm saying? And if I basically turn this off, you know, now it just sounds like less blowing. And, you know, that that's not even a bad thing. Because like I said, you kind of want to take out frequencies around here. But, you know, I kind of just want to keep that a little bit. And, uh, you know, I think it sounds a little bit more natural when you have it like that versus having more of a telephone effect. You know what I'm saying? And I don't really want to record telephone effect vocals unless that's what you really want. I don't know. So the next frequency I got here is around the 7,000 hertz. Now, I don't know if this is true. I heard this somewhere in the comments. Somebody was saying, oh, if you, this is the secret sauce in the industry. I Honestly, I think it sounds pretty good, man. Basically having the middle frequency up to the 7,000 hertz and you basically just turn it up a little bit. You know, I, I have it turned down not too, not too much. But let me just show you if I turn it up a lot more, now it sounds a little bit more, you hear a lot of what I'm saying. Um, it sounds a little bit more cleaner versus like just having it all the way off. Now it sounds a little bit more dull. You know, it, it really up, it's really up to you. You know what I'm saying? How you guys want to have it. Um, like I said, I kind of like how it sounds when you turn it up to 7,000 hertz. It sounds a little bit more cleaner. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then I don't turn it up by much, you know, to like the first dot. I basically just keep it basically like one or two dB of EQ, you know what I'm saying, in the 7,000 hertz. You know, it's not doing too much, but it sounds really great. So the next thing I did, you know, I basically turned the highs up just a little bit just so you could hear some of the words. You know, you know, I probably wouldn't turn this up, honestly. I, you know, I probably would just leave it regular or just at zero, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's really up to you how you guys sound and the artists that you're using. I have a low voice a deep voice, you know what I'm saying? So I basically don't, don't believe I'll get bad recordings if I just turn the highs up just a little bit. And just so, just to show you guys what this thing sounds like with it on and off again, one more time, mic check one, two, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, I appreciate it. Mic check one, two, how does it sound? Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you guys think? Okay, so the next thing that I would turn on or edit is this button right here, the the uh, preamp button. So basically, you know, I have this set to like 35 or something like that. When I'm recording and stuff, I actually have a good amount of volume that I actually bring to the, the preamp. Now, if you're with a female or somebody who speaks very low or something like that, 
then yeah, I'll probably bring it up to like 40 or 45, depending on how low they are. Now, if they are very loud artists, there's like screaming and stuff like that, then yeah, I'll probably bring it down to like a 30. So I feel like 35 for me is a sweet spot, but you guys got to test it out, see how everything works in your particular situation, and then go from there. The next thing I would adjust is this low Z button right here. So basically what this is doing is it's changing your impedance and stuff like that. Now, uh, depending on what microphone you're using, you know, you may want to use the low impedance or the high impedance, you know, because of this microphone that I have, the impedance is around, I think, 200 or 250. And um, when you turn the high impedance on, it's about 1000 or 1200. I can't remember exactly the numbers, but basically on Norman's website, they recommend that whatever your microphone impedance is, you want to use at least five times that. Basically, if you have a Neumann Tilo 103, you want to use the low impedance right here. So that basically gives you five times the impedance, which is a great number and gives you a, a louder sound when you have a Neumann Tilo 103. Because I have a U87, I'm going to turn this off and get high impedance because I have a higher impedance microphone, which has more numbers and impedance and all that kind of stuff. All right, gang. So now I'm going to show you my settings in the Universal Audio Console, what I would do if you guys have a tube tech. Some of these settings would apply if you have the actual hardware. If you don't have the hardware and you're using a plugin, I'm going to show you exactly what I would do in that particular situation. All right, so here's my screen right here. Now, right now, I have the SSL channel right now. Now, I won't use this in a recording setting, like when I'm recording vocals. I just have this up right now just because I'm recording this YouTube video. And I'm only using the noise gate just to help take out some of these extra noises in my room, just so you guys have a clean audio. So while I'm recording this video, so don't even worry about this. Pretend this SSL channel is not even there. You know what I'm saying? Don't even worry about it. So the next plugin I have is the Tube Tech Compressor. You could take these same effects regardless if you have the hardware or the software. You could take these same settings and plug them in and get a great recording. Depending on your recording situation and your vocalist, you might have to change some of these settings up. So I have the attack around 12 o'clock, the release around 2 o'clock. Sometimes I have this at manual. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have it at manual, you basically get exactly your attack and release settings when you have it at fix is a little bit different depending on what you want just play around with it so i have the ratio all the way down majority of the time when i'm recording vocals i do have it up to like around four or three you know just to get like a, a four to three ratio but sometimes you know i just try out different things i kind of like how it sounds all the way down and it's still working you know you, as you can see up here it's still jumping giving me some reduction when i get a little bit too loud next i will have the output between zero and ten you know, just to boost up the volume a little bit, not too much, because you don't want to distort your vocals. You know what I'm saying? You want to you just bring it up a little bit. And then, you know, you have your threshold here. If it's getting too loud or, or too much compression, of course, just turn the compression down and then you won't get as much compression that you normally do. But I kind of like it in between the 10 and the 20, you know, just just play around with, with your artists, have them perform before you hit the record button, because that way, you can mess around and get the best settings depending on how they're going to record, have everything dialed in perfectly. So with the meter, I like to have it at the compression. So I know exactly how much compression is applied, how much is actually working and what's going on. So let me know if you like these settings so far and hit that like button gang and don't forget to subscribe. So the next plugin I would actually use is this plugin right here. I like the 1176 compressor. Now I kind of like using this only just for bringing up the vocals a little bit. It does apply some compression here and there. Um, as you can see, here's my attack. Personally, I like to keep the attack around where the dot is on the top of the attack. Now, maybe a little bit behind it, maybe a little bit forward, depending on, you know, the recording situation. Um, I want to let some of those peaks come in and then the compressor comes in later on after that, you know, just so you can still capture some of the feeling and some of the grittiness of the vocal, regardless if you're, you know, if you're recording hip hop vocals, you know, you kind of want to keep some of that grittiness in there and, and some of that attack and that aggressiveness in there um so you don't want to hit the attack too soon because you might take a lot of that out and i want to keep that depending on my my situation i i, I want to keep that same thing with the release i don't have it up too far and, and if you guys don't know the further you go up the faster it'll be as you can see here like as i'm talking it's going a little bit faster than before now when i pull it back now it's moving a little bit more slower so maybe about five or you know maybe a little bit in between is a really good setting for recording vocals and uh, as you can see, my input and my output is not too high. You know, maybe you want to turn this down a little bit just so you don't get distortion. And like I said, you want to have your artist recording the vocal as you're adjusting all these settings because you don't know how loud they're going to get. You don't know exactly if there's going to create distortion here and there when they start performing and stuff like that. 
So it's best to have your artist performing while you're adjusting some of these settings if you're a really great engineer. Um, next thing I have right here, you see the output um, below 12. Once you get start going above 12 and stuff like that, you start getting into distortion and, and it's, it's a little bit loud. So I don't want to have that, especially when I'm recording. And as you can see, I have my ratio that four, um, just to get the lowest amount of compression I can get from this thing, just to compress it a little bit as much as I can, because I don't want to compress it too much, because I want to do all that in the mixing side. And now 95% of the time, I don't have this on. And you know, it, as you can see, it's not as loud as it was before. And like I said, I don't want to get any distortion when I'm recording my vocals. I do have this on because I it sounds great, man. It sounds great. And I, I want a little bit of a louder vocal. I don't want my vocals too loud and I don't want my vocals too low. So, you know, I just started actually using this along with my Tube Tech compressor because it actually sounds great. I like how it sounds. And, you know, like I said, I don't want my vocals too low. And it, uh, sometimes there are times that the Tube Tech doesn't always get everything. The 1176 will go ahead and clean that up for me. So the next thing I will add on my vocal, of course, is auto-tune. Now, this is my favorite auto-tune. There are a bunch of auto-tunes out there. This one is by far my favorite one. These guys are the one that actually kind of invented auto-tune. Depending on your situation, maybe you guys might not like this plugin or, you know, the price of it. But I think it's one of the best plugins for auto-tune. And so I have it off right now because, you know, I'm not singing. Uh, I'll turn it on in a minute. So the first thing I would do is turn on this classic button because... You know, when you have this classic off, basically with auto-tune, they kind of update the sound on making it sound a little bit more natural. You know, sometimes if you hit a note and you're not really there all the way, they'll allow you to bend your vocals a little bit. Now, me personally, I, I like how it sounds, but I think the older way sounds better, which is the auto-tune 5 version, which if you hit the classic button, it'll give you that auto-tune 5 sound. And uh, basically, it doesn't allow your vocals to bend as much. So instead of it bending to the next note, it's just going to go straight to the next note. And I like that. So the next thing I have is my retune speed all the way to two, because I feel like that's just a, a sweet spot for me. You know, depending on like your recording situation, you may want to change this up a little bit. And, you know, I'm a male, I'm a low male vocal. <laughs> I have a low male voice, so I have it at low male. Um, depending on who your artist, maybe they're at a, a higher pitch, you know, maybe they're a soprano. You make sure you have the right setting because like I said, I am a low voice male versus like if I put this at soprano, it'll actually start working at higher notes, which I don't want because I want it to actually start working at lower octaves because I have a low voice. And of course, make sure you adjust all the scales and stuff like that, whether you're in minor or major, you want to put all the right keys in there that's the best way to do it instead of trying to figure out and click it in that's not that's not the way how you want to go the next thing i would do is change this tracking i like to have it at around 30. once you start getting into 40 and stuff like that um basically what you're doing is making a pitch correction setting you know what i'm saying and i i, I don't really want that i want kind of that auto-tune sound now if you really want to get some more and more auto-tune sound you just basically turn it up and let me go ahead and turn this on man yeah yeah so i honestly like i like to keep it around here around the 30 areas so you know you know i feel like it's a great mixture between my real voice and auto tune you know what i'm saying i don't want it too high you know what i mean because i don't want to sound like a robot but you know it's it, it's all depending on you so the next effect i would add is the humanize now i don't go past 11 you know what I'm saying? If I if I want to take this off, of course, I'll just take it off to zero. But if I want to use it, I don't go past 11. I don't want it to sound super humanized or whatever because I don't want to add none of the uh, the bad vocals in there. You know what I'm saying? I want the auto-tune to fix my vocal as much as it can to really help my vocal. So after I have all that in there, I basically hit the record button because I want to record all those settings into my vocals and stuff like that so then I can build on top of it. In my personal opinion, I don't think it's great to just leave it on just the monitor mode. You just have all these high demanding plugins on just so you can hear it better. Why not just record them in there in, the, in your session? If you had the real hardware, you're basically going to record it in there. Why not just make those adjustments and then record it into your vocal you're kind of getting the same or close enough effect maybe like 95 percent 85 percent you know close enough to if you actually had the weird hardware because you're going to record everything in there regardless again gang hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content again check out zsounds.com they have great affordable plans to get you expensive gear again check out the music game.com we have free loop kits mini kits templates if you guys want me to mix your song link in the description let me know what other videos you guys want to see you guys stay safe Peace.